Hi everyone! In this episode, we'll start adding customizable parameter to our planet generation script. We'll do this by creating some resources. We could of course expose all of those parameters directly in the planet script, but by making them a resource, we can save them as presets and reuse them anytime we want, so it's very powerful. This series is an attempt at porting Sebastian Lag's excellent procedural planet tutorial from Unity to Godot, so if you enjoyed this, you might also want to check out his tutorial for more detailed explanation. That being said, this part deals with how to change the behavior of the editor, so it will be quite different from how things are done in Unity. Now if you remember, this is basically where we left off last time, and if we run our main scene, we're going to see our little planet as a sphere. Now, what we'd like to do is add some resources to that. So we are going to go into our file system and create a new script. And we're going to make this script inherit from resource. And we're going to call it planet data. Now, in this planet data, we're going to erase all of this because all we want for now is a bunch of properties we can expose to the editor first give this a class name so we can find it later and we need a few export variables for now let's just export something called radius and we'll set it to 1 by default now if we go back into our planet script which if you remember is the root of our system or our scene we are going to add this new resource as a parameter for the planet script so we'll call it planet data with an underscore. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to really easily tell Godot which kind of resource you want. But because we gave it a name, we can go back in the editor and select our planet data here. And you'll see a list of all the potential resources you can create in Godot. And somewhere in there, there should be our planet data because we gave it a class name. There you go, planet data. And if we open this resource, as you can see, we have the radius here. Now to use this data, what I'm going to do is pass our planet data to our regenerate mesh. This way we're passing the same data to all our faces. And of course, in the regenerate mesh, then I'm going to add this uh, variable as a parameter. And what we can do here is if you remember we added this uh, radius so once we've normalized the size of our planet we can multiply it by the planet data that radius so if we go into our main scene and we play we'll see that our planet is still the same as it was before but if we go into our planet script and our resource and we change it to say three then when we go back into the main and we hit play, then you can see that the planet is now three times as big. Now, it'd be really nice if we could preview all of this in the editor instead of having to hit play every time we want to see a change. And in Godot, if you want to run scripts directly in the editor, you need to add the tool keyword at the top of your script. And it's very important to do that for all the scripts that are going to run some code. Otherwise, you'll get some strange result. So we'll add it inside planet, we'll add it inside our planet data, and we'll especially add it into our uh, planet mesh face generator. Even though you had the tool keyword, the uh, ready function is never going to be called by a tool keyword because it's not going to run the initialization every frame or something like that. So we have to do a bit of trickery to get the mesh to regenerate whenever we change a property. The best way I've found to do this is to add setters to all your parameters. So for example, in our planet data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a set get and I'm going to call set planet data and I'm going to add a method set planet data that takes some kind of value as a parameter and of course we have to assign it to our planet data variable. But what we're going to do also is that we're going to take this code here and we're going to move it into a method that we're going to call on data change.
and that means that when we're setting our planet data we can call this on data change and that's going to call the regenerate mesh now that's probably not going to be quite enough yet because as you can see we now have our planet inside our viewport that means it got generated but if I change the radius nothing is changing and that's because even though we're going to now get a notification when the resource change that's only when we assign it to the variable planet data when we change something inside an existing resource we're not going to get a call to the setter what we need to do is notify our planet script whenever something inside the resource changes thankfully all resources in Godot come built in with something called the change event. So we can connect to this event and make sure that when something change, we'll also call on data change. To do this though, since we might be calling this set planet data several times, we're going to have a check. And if planet data is not null and the planet data is change event isn't connected so we can do not is connected and this event is called change we're going to call connected to the on data change method that we just created so if this is not connected already then we can do planet data that connect and we can connect to the change event on the on data change method so that's already pretty good but of course since this is a custom resource that we created well we need to fire this change event manually also so we are going to also here add a setter basically exactly the way we did it in our planet script we're going to set the radius first and then we're going to emit a signal change. And just with that now, we should see that whenever we change the radius, then our planet script is going to get recalculated. Now, I think I might have set the radius as an int, so I'm going to make sure to put a dot here so that it's a float and we have a little bit more precision. Here, here you go. Now our planet can have a radius set dynamically inside the editor so we can preview it inside the editor. Now this is very important to remember. That means that if we want everything to update in the editor when we are modifying something, then all of our properties have to have a set method that will emit the change event. But that also means that it has to be kind of recursive. So if, for example, our planet data was using some resource, then we'd have to register on the change event of the data that the planet data is using so that we can bubble it up all the way back to planet. So it can get a little bit tedious, but it's pretty straightforward. And once it works, then you can set any properties and have the whole thing be recalculated dynamically. Now, just for fun, we can add another property just to make sure that uh, everything is working fine. For example, we were hard coding the resolution before, so let's just go and add the resolution here in our planet data without forgetting to add the setter so that we can notify everything afterwards. So we have set resolution val, and this is basically identical to the uh, method that's just above and we can emit our signal change and with this we can go into our planet mesh face and if you remember we're receiving the planet data here so where we were hard coding the resolution here we can say uh, planet data that resolution and now if we go into our 3d view and we click on our properties we can change the resolution of our planet dynamically. So now we can adjust the radius and we can change the resolution. As you can see, this is nearly a cube. And then if we increase the resolution, 
maybe it's going to be easier if we watch it in wireframe. As you can see, as we reduce the resolution or increase the resolution, the detail go up dynamically inside the editor. And that's really nice. Now, of course, if you set the resolution to something really high, uh, you're going to get much more beautiful planets, but you might start experiencing some lag when you try to uh, refresh the mesh in the editor. Um, there's some optimization you can do for that, but I haven't found it to be that big of a problem for myself. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And now that we have a great base for adding more settings and viewing the result live, we're going to be able in the next episode to really start showing this as a beautiful planet. But that's going to have to wait for the next episode. So until then, see you there. Bye.